Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning into the channel. So today I'm bringing you a special episode. Uh, today you will be meeting Kay, who's one of my students who recently graduated from the Peaceful Homekeeping Academy. So this episode is going to be really exciting. She'll share what things were like before, what things were like in the program, and kind of how she feels now. So um, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that I don't know what was going on with Zoom, but the video quality was a little shaky, a little shy, shy. Um, but still excellent content. So I hope that you guys enjoy and I will see you guys in the next video. So everyone, this is Kay. Kay, will you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I, um, I work full time out of the home free pandemic. Um, and when last year all that kind of went down, I started working from home. Um, and I was also nine months pregnant at the time. So I had a baby shortly thereafter who is now one years old. Um, so a lot has been going on this past year for me. I've been working full time from home and I've had the baby full time at home with me as well. Um, I feel like I have a, a fairly large house with a lot of rooms that I need to keep up on. Um, and I have two cats that shed like crazy. So a lot of moving parts around here, um, but it's all good. Wow, that's a lot of transition, like in one year, like first we have a pandemic, then we have a baby working from home. So goodness, bless your heart. <laughs> I'm learning how to be a mom. There we go. <laughs> lot. Like you're definitely going to come out of this year being like a lot stronger because <laughs> it's like no, how could, you know, no one can kind of go through those changes and not become a different person. So anyway, I digress. So back to peaceful homekeeping. Um, so I'm going to ask a series of questions just about her experience. And so the first question that I want to ask is how did you feel about home management before you participated in the peaceful homekeeping academy? So for pretty much my whole adult life, I've kind of struggled with home management. And it's a little bit different for me. I feel like maybe some other people that have gone through your course because my home, I would say, is guest ready. Mm -hmm. um, I keep it pretty clean. You know, it's important to me to have a clean home. So that part I've got down. What I don't have down, what I didn't have down, um, was keeping it clean without driving myself crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am a perfectionist and I am a huge overthinker. So even like small tasks can feel like a really big deal <laughs> and be hard to manage. So I've, um, always really struggled with um, just feeling good about about it. Even though I had a clean house, I didn't feel good about it. Mm -hmm. um, it just felt really hard and difficult. And I always felt like I was failing. Yeah, you're on the right channel because I feel like we have like a lot of similarities, which we've talked about, like when it comes to that, just especially when you said like taking little things and like exploding it or making it a bigger deal. That was certainly a huge struggle for me as well. And so I'm so glad that you're here because I'm like this, it's just nice to know that like I'm not alone and like there are people out there who understand what I'm talking about. Like, cause I felt like for me as well, um, my house wasn't like a complete disaster but it wasn't something that I felt proud of as well. So I could totally relate. And like I said, you're in good company. So glad that you're here. And so um, whenever you were kind of working through this, what are some solutions that you tried before you came through the Peaceful Homekeeping Academy? So I tried to, <laughs> I tried to come up with my own routine, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm laughing because I'm thinking of a specific incident. <laughs> this is before I had my baby. Um, me and my husband lived actually in a different house at the time. And I got it in my head that every weekend I was going to clean the bathroom. 
for a perfectionist, cleaning the bathroom <laughs> looks like getting all the chemicals out, scrubbing on your hands and knees, getting out the big vacuum, detailed cleaning the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the weekend when my husband wants to spend time with me. Yeah. <laughs> and so we actually got like in a fight about it because here we are, like, I think something came up like last minute, like, and he was like, oh, let's go do this. It, it should be fun. And I was like, it's Saturday. I'm supposed to clean the bathroom. <laughs> and as you can imagine, that didn't go over very well. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, like, why am I detail cleaning the bathroom every week on Saturday? Mm -hmm. There's only two of us not getting that dirty, like, and I just felt like I wasn't, I felt like I should be doing that, mm -hmm. but it just wasn't working for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually also tried Fly Lady um, and I love the concepts there. I think a lot of that really, really resonated with me. And I got into Fly Lady recently. Um, and I was watching her videos and buying all her stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the more I watched her videos, um, the more I felt like I was kind of failing at that too, um, because I'm a perfectionist and she's actually pretty strict on a couple points, um, like wearing lace up shoes and getting dressed like first thing in the morning and like, you know, we don't wear shoes in this house. And, you know, sometimes with the baby, like it, I just can't get dressed like first thing in the morning, you know, things like that. And so again, like I felt like I was failing because I wasn't hitting all the things I was supposed to hit. And um, it was actually through watching Fly Lady videos that I found you. And when I found you, I was like, oh my gosh, she gets it. She gets it. Like, and that was it. I was like, I'm all in with this Lede woman, <laughs> like sign me up. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to talk about, about how things have changed for me. Beautiful. Um, okay. So I wanted to go back to your bathroom story and I want to, for me, that's how I used to approach cleaning as well. And I don't know, do you, were you taught like that was like in your childhood? Like if you're going to do anything with this bathroom, like this is the way it needs to be done. Because that was my case. Like that was pretty much how I was like taught to handle cleaning stuff. And so anytime something, the smallest thing was wrong with the bathroom, it, in my mind, it wasn't like, oh, you could, you know, you could just go clean out the sink and not have to make it this big event. But no, it had to be like a big event or deep cleaning or pulling everything out, which is why I wasn't on top of it enough because it was so difficult. So anyway, I just want to say I can relate because I think like I kind of had this, these images in my head, like if you're going to do something, you better make sure you do it well. And I feel like that kind of impacted me a lot because it's like, well, I have so much going on. I don't have time. And then that's where I started dealing with buildup. So anyway yeah like you said when I was growing up guess what day was cleaning day it was Saturday yeah and it was my job to clean the bathroom every Saturday yeah. <laughs> on my hands and knees scrubbing that floor you know so of course that's what I thought I should do when I was an adult uh -huh. but you know yeah it kind of, it's kind of hard when you know you have like all of everything is kind of on your shoulder and you have to like try to be more balanced because not only do you have to handle cleaning, but you have to handle the baby, got to handle this. So it definitely changes. And um, for me, I found that like I needed like a more balanced approach. And so that's so relatable. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. My next question is um, what made you decide to sign up for the Peaceful Homekeeping Academy? Okay, well, it, it really truly was a no brainer for me um, because I just, I resonated so much with what you were talking about. Like, it felt like you really understood the perfectionism issue, um, which was a huge one for me. But I think what, and <laughs> I've told you this story on our very first call together, I cried. <laughs> but after having, my baby, 
you know, I was reading a parenting book. I'm going to try not to cry right now. <laughs> but um, I actually forget which book it was because I've read so many. <laughs> but they said, you can't give your child something you don't have yourself. Yeah. And that got me. <laughs> you know, I don't want my baby to feel the way I feel about these things. I don't yeah. want her to struggle with perfectionism. I don't want her to struggle with overthinking. And if I don't want to pass those things on to her, mm -hmm. I need to fix them for myself. And so when I read that, it was like, whatever I have to do, that's what I'm going to do. Because yeah. It's not just about me anymore. I'm raising a child here. Like I need her to come away with a different message than what I walked away with. Yeah. Okay. This is kind of like a little bit off the cuff. I'm going to ask a question that's not on our, you know, or we have a list of questions we're going down. I'm going to ask a question. Um, so on one of my videos, this is like a statement that people seem to connect with. And I just want to ask about your experience if you feel like you resonate with it but I feel like for me I say that my homekeeping has been kind of like a ministry to me about perfectionism because it's through my home that I get to kind of confront that thinking and then make a different choice and then it helps me with other areas of my life when I'm like okay like with this YouTube channel okay are you being a perfectionist about this like are you not progressing because you don't think you can do it perfectly or like what's going on and like other areas of my life. And so I wanna know, do you feel like peaceful homekeeping has helped you maybe illuminate other areas of your life where you're struggling with perfectionism? Or do you, like, I don't know, I just kind of wanna know your thoughts oh, yeah. on that. Oh yeah, oh, yeah definitely. Yeah. I mean, anyone who deals with perfectionism, once they understand what, what the issue is, it is very easy to see that it affects every area of your life. Yeah. So I remember thinking like back when I would struggle so much with this and with overthinking, especially, I would say to myself, like, do I really not have anything more interesting to think about? Like, really? Like, am I like the most boring person on earth? Like, I just would think about the silliest things all the time like cleaning and like you know oh should I like do this first or should I do that for like who cares who cares yeah. like, I just felt like so uninteresting and that's one way right like I didn't have room in my brain for anything more interesting but also I mean at work perfectionism is a big stumbling block for me sometimes mm -hmm. and um, I can't wait. I've already started like applying the things I've learned through peaceful homekeeping to my work life and mm -hmm. it's already started making a difference for me. And I'm so excited about exploring, um, that more, like how else can I, you know, carry what I've learned over into my work life and other areas. Um, cooking yeah. <laughs> uh, is a big thing for me. <laughs> I never really learned how to cook. I'm not very good at it, but now I have a child I have to feed. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, I'm really learning how to not let my perfectionism <laughs> take over there as well. Like so many different things. Um, yeah. even things like reading, mm -hmm. reading books. Like I love books, but I love reading books kind of um <laughs> except when I get the my perfectionism gets in the way you know so um once you start to realize all the way ways it affects you yeah yeah it's crazy it's so like it's so crazy to me too because I really feel like it's like one thing to like talk about perfectionism and to kind of know it in your brain and then it's another thing when you have to like do this simple task and your perfectionism is like, no, 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 this is horrible, you know, <laughs> like, wait, and you're like, perfectionism, I'm just trying to make this better, and so for me, like, I think I understood logically 
but like it's just a whole different ball game to like do the exercises and to know what that feels like in your body so that you can like start making different choices like is this you know what i really want to do and so um i know that you know for people who are watching who are still like working through that and processing that like it's gonna sound very weird and strange but like based off of you know my um training and my academy i know that i'm not the only one so <laughs> like yeah. a lot of my students like y'all know what i'm talking about like it's a like an actual like difference between knowing it and feeling it and learning to take charge of that and so i'm like yeah a nice house is great or whatever for me like a nice house is important like i don't want to be embarrassed but i'm like learning about myself through my home like that was even bigger and it's helped me have like breakthroughs in like other areas of my life as well so I yeah it I'm learning so much about myself and I think something that you really helped me learn about myself is the concept of what do you call it you call it work procrastinating yeah <laughs> procrastination <laughs> I do that I do that I will I have no problem cleaning if I'm trying to put off something I need to do for work that I don't feel like doing. Yeah. You know? And so I'm starting to think like, why? maybe that's why my house is pretty clean. You know, I keep doing things like that. And yeah. I need to realize when that's happening, because the longer I put that thing off, the worse and worse it's going to get. Yeah. And I can, I can let that go. I can, like, if I keep working at this, I don't have to go through that anymore. Yeah, so beautiful. All right, let me move on to my next question. Um, okay, so tell us about your experience in the Peaceful Homekeeping Academy. Like, what was that like? Okay, so I was actually really lucky, <laughs> I think, because I actually got to work with you one-on-one. -on -one, mm -hmm. And that experience for me was amazing. <laughs> um, and part of it, I think, is because I, I did feel like my, like I was maybe like a step or two, like I knew the fly lady techniques, I felt like my house is pretty decluttered, you know, so the experience that I got to have with you was actually very personalized. And um, that, that was great. I highly recommend <laughs> to anyone out there, one-on-one um, -on -one with Lede is awesome. Um, so yeah, I think, first of all, I don't know, for those of you out there who have ever read The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin, <laughs> but, um, I am not an upholder, I am not a rebel, um, I am an obliger, <laughs> which means that I, um, I do really well with accountability. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, so the accountability for me was amazing. Um, to have someone that I was checking in with every morning, every evening, um, that was golden for me. And you know, because I was on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I really enjoyed that. And that made it a really, really big difference for me ingraining these things as habits. Yeah. Um, and I also just really enjoyed our time together weekly, you know, when we got to be on a call once a week. Um, I think you and I have so much in common. You have so much in common with the other students that, you know, go through this course. Like we're in the academy for a reason. And it's because we're speaking the same language here, you know? Oh, yeah. And so it was just so nice to be able to talk to someone who like gets it. Yeah. And there's no shame. There's no thinking, like no one's thinking you're crazy. You know, it's just really empowering actually to be able to like talk about these things and find solutions. Yeah. Oh, yay. I'm so happy that like you had a great experience. Um, as you mentioned before, like you got the one on one experience, which you're my first person kind of creating that one on one experience with. So I was really nervous, like, um, like 
how you would feel about the program because that's like a big piece of it is like the community and stuff. And so I'm really happy that like you still felt like you had a good experience and like you don't even have anything to compare it to. So you're just like, this is great. And I feel like very happy about that and very proud of that. Cause that was something that I was like really worried about. Like um, if you would feel comfortable sharing and if that dialogue would, you know, just flow as freely without like all the other examples. So I'm glad. For me, it felt very natural. It was yeah. like almost like therapy every week. It was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy. Um, okay. So my next question is, how do you feel about staying on top of the home management now? And like, based on your answer, what do you think has kind of contributed to that change? Okay, well, um, let me tell you a little story. <laughs> um, so our last day of accountability after eight weeks was on a Friday. And I left for the weekend after that. And I didn't get back home until 1030 at night on Sunday. And so Monday morning, I'm waking up. It's my first day with no accountability. I haven't been home in days. <laughs> and it was really going to be a make or break moment. Like what was going to happen? Uh -huh. um, but I'm like so proud to say that like I woke up, I did my routines. I didn't skip a beat. Like I didn't have to think for a moment like, oh, what do I do now? Like, I just knew exactly what to do. And it was just amazing. Like, I just can't even <laughs> describe how different that is from like two months ago. If I had left for the weekend and come home and it was Monday morning, I would have not known where to start. Yeah. I would have had a to-do list a mile long in my head and I would have just felt terrible. And when you feel bad, <laughs> you don't actually get that much done in my experience. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> so when you just feel better about yourself, about your house, like it's just, everything's easier. Like these tasks that I used to build up in my head are easy now. Um, and I think, well, like I said, building them into habits and just knowing what my routines are is just a huge, huge part of it. And the, one of the reasons why I was able to build these habits so well happened pretty early on with you. So um, I think it might have been like, I don't know, maybe the first week. And my baby was turning one <laughs> and I was trying to figure out how in the heck to throw her a virtual birthday party. <laughs> and my husband and I were up late trying to figure out the technology and how are we going to have 40 people on the Zoom call and how can we're going to be, anyway, you can imagine there was a little bit of bickering. And I'm the kind of girl who goes to bed at 9.30, okay? And it's like midnight and I haven't done my evening routine. And I was like, time for me to just check in with you, let you know what I did. And I was like, ha ha, that's not getting done tonight. And you were like, hold on a second. <laughs> and you said to me, um, you know, we're trying to build a habit here. Like, I get it. You've got a lot going on. You're tired. But like, can you give it five minutes? And I was so tired. <laughs> But I thought about it. Like it, you made it made me stop and think. Like, could I give it five minutes? And I looked at the kitchen and what I had to do. And I was like, you know what? I bet I could get this all done in probably ten minutes. And I did. I got it done in like eight minutes. And I was so proud of myself, and I was so glad that you coached me through that moment because that is what kind of did it for me. It showed me that there are certain things you wanna stick with, right? Your morning and evening routines, you stick with those as 
much as you like hell or high water, if you can, you put in a couple minutes on those routines. Um, other things, you know, like life happens. You can move things around, you can, you know, do whatever you want, but having like those couple things that are really the, like the keystone habits for you, like that's made a big difference for me. And um, I'm super excited because like, hot spots and stuff are like things you learn about in the academy and that's made a huge difference for me my sister came over in the middle of this challenge and she had no idea I was doing this program with you and she said to me and I quote you know your house is always clean but it's really clean right now <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh like Thank someone you noticed it was so exciting and my husband loves it he Aww. he loves like how clean the house is and the fact that like it all just seems to happen so seamlessly now yeah because as I mentioned it didn't happen very seamlessly before there was a lot of angst behind it <laughs> so um it's just made a, a huge difference at home for me yeah oh I'm so happy to hear that Okay, I wanted to go back to the story <laughs> of um, the birthday party night. Yeah, I want to tell it from like my perspective. Do it. Do it. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't get this message. And okay, in my mind, this is how I read it. It's eleven o'clock. There's no way I can do this. <laughs> That's probably not how you typed it. That's how I read that. And like as as your coach, I was like. <laughs> You know, like, I know that that's kind of like how perfectionism speaks to me. Like, it just shouts at me. It tells me I can't do it. It's too much. It's too overwhelming. And so, like, I'm so glad that you were, like, open to that conversation. Because I think the most important thing, especially when I was like, can we do it for five minutes? Let's build this habit. This is an opportunity to punch perfectionism in the face. Because it's like perfectionism will tell you, like, if I can't do it all, if I can't do it perfectly, there's no point. And so I just thought that this was like a great opportunity to like show up and see that it's okay. Like, even if you don't finish, you know, just to make it a little better. Cause even for me, you've seen my accountability photos. <laughs> like there are nights where I just, I have to like have a, you know, a counter full of, not full of, but several dishes that didn't make it in the dishwasher. And it's okay. Like as long as I'm showing up and perfectionism will tell me like, if I can't do it well, don't even bother. And it's like, you have to like override that. And so I just wanted to kind of elaborate, you know, for people who are watching and who are like wondering kind of like what that was about. That's pretty much, you know, what I try to kind of help identify um, because sometimes I feel like with perfectionism, it just really helps when you can have that partner who can help you see your blind spots because sometimes like perfectionism will come knocking at your door and you don't realize that it's perfectionism and like vice versa. Like I have, you know, especially like in our kind of behind the scenes group, once you make it through the academy, like we talk about all kinds of things. I'm sure you've seen by now. And so I've had people call me out too. Like, are you sure that's not perfectionism? Especially when it comes to like health and wellness and other things that I have that I want to do. So I'm, I just thought that was a really great opportunity to like um, just kind of be that extra pair of eyes to let you see like this is probably um situations that you found yourself in before where it's just like the alarm bells are going off there's no way you know and um so I don't know where I was going with this story <laughs> but yeah from my perspective that's totally what that moment was about I was like okay and that's what I want you know that's what I want when people come through my program is I want to kind of help you see where your blind spots are because it's like you can know about all the different types of systems you can even know about the peaceful homekeeping system but it's like when moments like that pop up you know how do you respond and that's the piece of the accountability it helps you kind of put yourself in a situation where before you can just kind of wiggle yourself out of it but now you're like in a situation where you have to like you know talk about it and um the beauty of a coach is that they can help you because sometimes life just happens you know like she you know you just said like um and you can't get to it and you got to give yourself grace but then there are some situations where it's kind of like 
your perfectionism and it's nice to like have someone to be able to help you notice that so that you feel empowered to make a choice like what am I going to do about it and you went through and you killed it I was so proud of you that day like <laughs> super proud so well okay so I thought of a couple more things while you were talking yeah first of all doing the accountability back and forth with you was so helpful because I got to see that you weren't perfect no <laughs> with it, you know <laughs> Yeah. And that actually is so helpful because I want my gold stars, you know, like I, you know, want to do the best possible thing. Um, but life is life. And like, I can't always do that. And you were like a model for me. Like, this is what real life is like, yeah. even when you're on this system, like this is how you can adjust. And like kind of going back and forth with like, okay, this thing cropped up in my life today. This is how I adjusted my plan. Yeah. And just every day, like kind of seeing like, okay, in the morning, this is what my plan was. And then in the evening, we would say, this is what actually happened and like what choices we made and why we made them. And thinking through those things together taught me like what is acceptable, like what how does this really work <laughs> yeah and it was because I had a role model um showing me the way it works and that's another reason why I knew that you were going to be a good role model for me is because I think it was in one of your videos um you were talking about planners and you said something that blew my mind <laughs> you said Oh yeah, I get bored of planners. So I like to change my planner up pretty often. Okay. This that blew my mind. And let me tell you why, because <laughs> I love planners. I love switching my planner up all the time, but I look at it. I looked at it as failure. Mm -hmm. I would look at it like, oh my gosh, I tried this new planner system and I used it for like a month and now I'm already trying to move on to something else. Yeah. And the fact that you had a different perspective on that and you were just like, yeah, I like to switch it up. Like, I was like, I didn't know I could think of it that way. Yeah. <laughs> and like, that was like such a mind shift for me. And I think that's a really good example of what you taught me in the academy is like to tweak things that aren't working for you. Oh, yeah. And I never tweaked before. <laughs> I love reading self-help books. I love trying new programs, you know, all that stuff. But if I didn't follow it to the letter, I thought it didn't work for me. And I thought I did it wrong. Yeah. And I felt like a failure. But with you, it's just a hundred percent different. It's okay. This, this is your situation. This is the program. And you just play around until you find what works for you. And now that I've been through the program and I'm in the um, alumni Facebook group, like I'm having a blast, like thinking of different ways to do things like one week to the next, like, hey, that didn't really work for me. How can I make it easier? How can I change it up? And there's none of that like shame feeling anymore. It's just more of like a fun experiment. Yeah. And so that's, yeah, that's a big deal for me. I love that. Um, and I feel like that's like one of the beautiful things. And also it's like a, a beautiful thing and a curse at the same time about overcoming perfectionists because that piece of us that like wants to follow the rules and follow the rubric, like it's because it comes from a place of wanting to do a great job. Right. And then at the same time, it can be like extremely limiting because it's like, yeah, like in school and like all these other structured environments, like that's, you know, someone created the roles. And if we just stuck by them, we were rewarded for that. We did well, but it's like, now this is the real life, you know, and no one hands us the rule book. We got to kind of make it our own. And sometimes um, that piece of us that wants to do a good job can also make it hard for us to like be flexible and then I think that's kind of where we get into troubles because it's like, if we tweak, it's a fail, you know, it's, we're failing. If we don't tweak, we're failing. Like it just 
can kind of feel like a big spiral. And so I totally understand. I feel like that's been a huge part of my journey just over the last several years. It's like learning how to um, break that mold a little bit. So welcome to the dark side. <laughs> I love it. So much more fun. Yeah, it's more fun, more flexible. You get stuff done, you know, and it's okay. Like, it's, I think now I'm kind of like, as long as I'm going with the spirit of the program or the spirit of whatever it is I'm trying, like, it's okay. And like, I can make it better as I go. So I love that. And I don't have to wear shoes. There we go. <laughs> That's like a big deal for some people. The shoe thing, <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna let y'all debate. <laughs> right? <laughs> Okay, so the next question is, um, okay, what would you say to the person who wonders if this program is too difficult to commit to? Like, do I give you, do you feel like I've given you too much to do? <laughs> like, is this too okay. difficult? Well, I'm going to be really honest. Here, okay, go for it. Experience. <laughs> yes. Because I want, I want people to understand how I felt. Um, it was hard in the beginning. I'm not gonna lie, and it's not because of the program, it's because when I started, I was already in the middle of like three or four things, right? I like had this birthday party going on, I had this big work project, I had like a big like decluttering project I like was on a timeline for. Um, so I had these things going on and that was on me, you know, and <laughs> that had nothing really to do with you. But the reason why I decided to join anyway, like even though like I, I had to keep going on those projects is because I always am working on four different projects at the same time, you know, and like there you go. that was never going to change. And <laughs> I just needed to jump in and get started. And so my first week I was a little overwhelmed because I had a lot on my plate. And I just knew like, if I wanna eventually get to a place where I have a more peaceful home, like I need to get through this. Yeah. And now I plan projects like that in advance. I'm not caught up behind deadlines like I used to be, you know? And so, yeah, it was a little crazy in the beginning, but now, now I don't have to go through that again. Um, yeah. So that was my true, actual, real experience with it. Okay. I have a couple things to say. Number one, kudos to you for not waiting because okay. I feel like when I started kind of getting, everybody knows I started with the fly lady system. I felt the temptation to be like, well, my life is crazy right now. I'm going to wait because we have guests. I'm gonna... And then I just was reading the book and something just told me, no, girl, get up, get started. This is like something easy you can do. And because of that experience, I now feel like if there's like any habit that I want to start, like that's the thing. It has to be a habit that can work when my life is crazy or else I'm not going to be able to be consistent. And so kudos for you for like jumping in and trying to be like, well, this is my real life. Oh yeah. So that is my advice to, to anyone <laughs> who is considering joining the Academy. Do not wait. Do not wait. It's never going to be a better time <laughs> and it'll work out. It'll work out. It might be crazy in the beginning, you know, but that's okay. Yeah. Just jump in or you're never going to do it. Yeah. And then also, I will have to say for Kay, things are a little different because you did the individual or one-on-one -on -one coaching. We did jump in kind of fast, like compared to what other people did. I think we skipped ahead like two weeks. So like week one routines, week two, we moved into the next thing. So I, yeah, it was fast. And we've definitely had to work out some kinks along the way, but like, how do you feel now? Do you feel like, um, the program is easier to integrate into your life? Do you feel like you're still having to like work the kinks around or still having to tweak and work around that? Like, how are you feeling now that you've had a chance to kind of see what the whole system is about? So I'm still working on it and I will always be working on it. And I, like I mentioned, I think that's kind of groundbreaking part for me mm -hmm. that like, 
now that I know the system, I know how it works. Um, I am free to switch it up however many times I need to. And I know I'm going to have to switch it up. My husband is getting a new job two weeks. My, <laughs> my whole schedule, my whole way I've been doing everything is going to change. Yeah. And I'm not worried about it. Like, I'm just going to try different things until I find what works with the new schedule. Like, and I have that confidence now because of this program. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay. I love it. <laughs> All right. So the next question is, um, what would you say to the person? And I think we kind of talked about this, but I'll ask you again, um, who thinks that they have to do this program perfectly is perfection required to do this program? Yeah, no, <laughs> perfection is not required. Um, and I think what I've struggled with for many, many, many years is something we were talking about when it's, when do you push yourself? And when do you give yourself grace, right? And I would have these like epic conversations in my head, like lying in bed. I haven't even gotten up yet. Like, oh, I've got to do this thing. I really don't want to do this thing. Do I have to do this thing? Should I do this thing? Like, oh, uh, you know, like, should I push myself to get it done? Or, you know, should I move it to the next day or whatever? And a big part of what you are learning, actively learning in the academy is how to make those decisions. And so you don't have to be perfect, but you need to learn what kind of your, your decision-making skills are. And once you learn how to make those decisions, like you don't feel like you have to be perfect. You know, mm -hmm. you feel like you, okay, this is the choice I'm making and we're moving on, you know, yeah. and it's not a big deal. You don't have to be perfect. I feel comfortable with the choice I made. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z differently next time. And that's it. Beautiful. And I just want to add to for like me, like, I feel like a big thing that I get also from having like a system and doing the program is I don't have to do it perfectly, but I know that like, if I try to show up as consistently as I can, like things will resolve. Like, you know, like even if I don't get to do the per dishes perfectly at night, like if I be, cons if I'm consistent, I show up and do it in the morning, like it will eventually go away. I just have to be consistent and I don't have to, you know, be perfect every time I do it for that to happen. So that was like really groundbreaking for me when I got my systems together. Cause I always imagined that in order for me to feel good about my home, like my home needs to be 100% clean, 100% of the time. And for me, I just find that relief in knowing like, no, as long as I keep like trekking along, <laughs> like we'll get there and I don't have to do it all, you know, at this exact moment. Um, so anyway, I just want to- And another that. thing you mentioned that is so true is during the day, like we've got children, like this place is a mess. There's toys everywhere, like there's, things where they should not belong like you know and that's life I mean yeah. and that's okay because at the end of the day once those babies are finally asleep you know you can pick up in 15 minutes and kind of reset and yeah. your home is never going to be perfect especially when there's children living with you yeah <laughs> and that's fine it's okay <laughs> You know, like them toilets is clean, them sheets is changed, them windows are shiny, you know? <laughs> like it's like all the stuff I wasn't getting to. And it's like, so what? Like I feel, for me, I feel more comfortable letting the toys do what the toys do. Cause I know that everything else is taken care of. Everything else is dusted, you know? Like my home is like cleanly. So let the kids play. Oh, that reminds <laughs> me. Yeah, so I um, mopped one day. It was my day to mop. So I mopped the floor. And then um, my baby had lunch shortly after and she spilled an entire container of Cheerios on the floor. And I don't know about you, but at one point in time, my thought would have been like, I just cleaned that floor. I yeah. just cleaned that floor and look what you did. Mm -hmm. You know, but 
for some reason now my first thought was oh I just cleaned the floor like I could pick these cherries up put them right back in that no, container and I know the floor's <laughs> clean so that's all right um and it just was no big deal like I yeah. just put the cheerios back and we moved on with our day and it just it just feels different now yeah I totally I feel like I can relate um and I think too like when for me when the homekeeping I'm not gonna ever say like this isn't work because I feel like keeping your home together is work but you know maybe we can improve the workflow a little bit so that it's not as stressful and for me when I feel like it's not as stressful like I don't have like the anxiety attacks that I used to have, like when my kids, they come behind me. Okay, you already know. She's heard my stories <laughs> for the last eight weeks, how these kids yeah. like come behind me and they just do what I do. They like drag stuff out. Like she knows the craziness that goes on here. And I don't feel like that, like frustration and tension that I used to feel before when I didn't have a plan because I'm like, okay, well, I know exactly how to respond to this. I'm like, I don't have to like me doing the most. Like I can, I still feel like I'm in control. So um, to me, it definitely makes a big difference. Like, I don't even want to say the relationship that I have with my children, but like the perception, my perception of the messes that they make. And I feel very much like I can just let my kids be kids. I don't have to control like their every, you know, waking moment, trying to keep the house clean. Cause it feels like I have a plan. I know what to do and it's gonna be all right. So <laughs> yeah. All right, so let me, I think we're down to the last question. Um, the program is called Peaceful Homekeeping. Do you feel more peaceful with managing your home? Why or why not? Oh, 100%. Yeah, it's it's totally different now. Um, it's just kind of like took away all that overthinking, all that stress. Um, so much more peaceful in my brain. <laughs> yeah. We're and, that's the most important place. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just I'm so thankful. I'm so so thankful um for you, for this academy that I did this for myself, you know? Yeah. Like it's just it was one of the best things I've ever done. Yay, I'm so happy. And like, I'm just so grateful that we got to do this program together and I'm so happy for the results that you received. Isn't she awesome, everyone? She is, she is, she is. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just so thankful because I feel like it was definitely your commitment, your consistency, your openness that uh, definitely created the results that you've experienced. And I'm just, I'm very pleased and I'm just so happy for you, so yay. So, Thank you, I'm glad I made you proud. Yay! She told me you're going to, and you have done so very much. Thank you. So, yay! So that's it for us, I guess. You guys, the doors to the Peaceful Homekeeping Academy will be opening up again this summer. So if there are any of you amongst us who would just like to have somebody support you as you're building your homekeeping systems, um, I'm here because it's like one thing to like know what to do in your head, but it's another thing when you implement it and things come up and you know you need someone to kind of help you figure out how to navigate you know sometimes you just don't know what you don't know until you do it and if you feel like you need someone to kind of help you navigate that or help you see your blind spots then i will love to support you on your journey and so just stay tuned and uh, if you guys like hearing from my students definitely give this video a thumbs up um and yeah i'll be trying to get more videos like this out for you guys and thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next video bye